Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today on the DCC Guy, uh, I want to do a bonus video for you. Uh, one, of, uh, one of my readers reminded me that uh, in the April 2020 uh, DCC Corner Column, I promised to do a, a short tutorial on how I programmed the Tsunami 2 decoder in this uh, lifelike Jeep 7. So what I want to do today then is move over to the uh, computer and pull up Decoder Pro and I'll go through the steps that I used to set up the lights and sounds and, and the like on uh, this, uh, this model and uh, using a Tsunami 2 uh, TSU 1100 decoder. That's the very small um, micro version of that decoder and it fit in here very very well it's rated at three quarters of an amp so you know this uh, pulls about half an amp something like that so it's, it's not going to overtax the decoder so let me go ahead and get things set up on the computer and we'll go ahead and get started okay um, before I get started with the actual programming steps I want to mention one thing that um, uh, one of the viewers here asked me about in a comment or, or he contacted me with an email, and that was to uh, a comment I made about always putting the locomotive on the service mode programming track to check for shorts. And he wondered, do, does the uh, uh, command station uh, give an audible alarm if there is a short? Now, to my knowledge, uh, no system that I've been able to, uh, to read about and look up on the internet uh, does that. The thing is, the NMRA uh, standards and recommended practices for DCC require that the programming track be current limited to 250 milliamps. And, you know, typically most of these uh, 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 programmers are putting out something on the order of about 12 volts then at 250 milliamps for very, very short amounts of time because they're only reading and powering the track in very short bursts. So the amount of actual power that is being applied to the track that the decoder is seeing is very, very limited, okay? And it's not going to burn up your decoder. However, if you take a decoder and it has a wiring error on it and you put it on your main line right off, you know, it's going to be getting somewhere between 14 and 15 volts at potentially up to typically 5 amps for continuous power. So, there is great potential to let the smoke out when that, or if a short does happen. Also, most decoders made today will automatically shut themselves down if there is a short. So they will go into self-protection mode. So that's another sign. Uh, on Soundtrack's decoders, they have an error light that flashes a code for you, indicating that there's a short. So there's a number of different ways to know that you've, you're experiencing a short in a decoder and remove it from the track and check it just to make sure before you proceed any further. So I hope that addresses the question. Okay, let's go ahead and, and move forward with these programming steps. And the first thing I talked about in the article was uh, setting the uh, master volume. And that's important because, you know, depending on the type of speaker you're using, they can vary anywhere from about 0 0.6, 0 0.7 watts for a uh, sugar cube speaker up to two or three watts uh, or even larger for uh, some of the larger speakers. Um, also, the decoders themselves vary considerably in the power output. Uh, many of them are rated at about one at eight ohms and that varies, okay? So uh, if you've got one that's two watts at eight ohms and you've got a speaker on there that can only take one watt at eight ohms, then you need to cut your uh, master volume in half. So here is my master volume control, and the maximum you can go with is 255. So we're going to bring it down to half of that, or about 126. Okay, whoops, a little bit lower. And that's 128, close enough. And if I put my cursor over this, you can see it says that it sets the overall volume to uh, using CV 128. And I showed in a previous video how you can uh, use Decoder Pro set up just like this to calculate these uh, CV values for you. Put your cursor over it. It'll tell you what CV it is. And then you can go up here uh, to the CVs menu and 
just read that value. So if we go down here to 128, you can see it's set at 128, which is what I just changed. So you could write that down and then use your throttle to program it. Um, I prefer to use Decoder Pro. It's just so much easier in the long run. So this is all I have to do to set my master volume right there. CV128 to a value of 128. Um, another thing that's very, very good to use is the equalizer. And the reason for that here is you can see if you're using a, um, a sugar cube speaker like I did in this installation, you want to set it for the micro speaker uh, setting. And that optimizes the sound output for that kind of, uh, of speaker. Okay, so I'm going to write that change to the decoder. And now let's go back here. Um, another thing I, I like to do is set the horn and the bell. Now you can see here, I've set each of these to a value of 35. And I use that, I, I don't like a loud horn and a loud bell, particularly the bell, because, you know, if you're using that a lot in a yard for switching or things of that nature, to me, it gets annoying after a while. So I like to, you know, keep the volume kind of low. So I will go ahead and set these both to a value of 35. And again, you can see this is CVs 129 and 130. And you can program them by hand or use Decoder Pro if you've got it you know, hooked up to your command station. Um, so that makes it fairly easy. And then afterwards, you can go ahead and save this again and uh, using, you know, write changes on the sheet. And I recommend doing that as opposed to writing the full sheet because if you start writing to the full sheet, you could be sitting here a long time on some of these sheets. Um, so I've changed the air volume and the bell volume. Afterwards, you can go to Ops Mode Programming and fine tune those sounds uh, a little bit better using your throttle again. Or you can just set up uh, Decoder Pro with your command station to program in Ops Mode and send commands to the main track. Um, but either way, it works fairly well uh, to, to go ahead preset a value that's fairly low, or, and then fine tune it uh, later on on the ops mode track where you can hear it moving and running and you know get a better feel for the actual sound volume. Okay, the next thing uh, that I wanted to do then is move on to uh, the quiet mode. Now the quiet mode feature is on the sound panel, and you can see here I've got the quiet mode set, and you can see it's CV113, uh, to a value of 30. And what that does it's, uh, is after 30 seconds of inactivity with all of the functions turned off, and that means all functions, even the lights have to be turned off. But as soon as all those functions are turned off and it sits there for 30 seconds, it will then automatically turn the sound off and it will just sit there. And you don't have to listen to that noise. And let me tell you, with you know, five or ten locomotives sitting in a yard somewhere um, idling away, that noise can get very annoying after a while, particularly for diesels. It's not as bad with steam locomotives because their sounds are not that constant drone that you get with a diesel. So I use the quiet mode timeout period. I use 30 seconds on all of my decoders, and that way I don't have to listen to that. Okay, let's go ahead then and take a look at the lighting features. So that's this panel or this pane here. Um, so the first thing I wanted to do is make sure that I set things for auto dimming. So we're going to auto dim in reverse. And there's a lot of choices here for what you can set it at, but I use auto dimming reverse so that the locomotive will actually will automatically dim its headlights when it's moving in the reverse direction. Okay, um, and I set it for LED mode. You can you can set it for incandescent lamps or LED. In this case, I used LEDs, so we want that uh, set up. And I also set it up for directional control, forward and reverse here. So again, all of this stuff is right here and organized for you. And, you know, it tells you which bit to change, the whole nine yards. So you can set all of these, look up the CV setting, and program it by hand, or use Decoder Pro, as I've said. So we want to, we've set those up, uh, you know, using CVs 49 and 50, I believe it is here, no, 49 bit seven, uh, to set that up, and um, we're ready to roll. Um, 
directional control was it was 50 CV 57 okay and 58 for the backup light and this locomotive since it's a Jeep has both you can see that I've set it to auto dim when going forward and uh, it's the reverse of what we're seeing with auto dim reverse and again that's CV 50 and the LED feature uh, we set CV 50 to uh, to a value for that and then we want directional control on these so again all of these things are right there you can either click you know when you click on them you set them and then go look up those individual CVs uh, in the CV listings and that's all there is to that it's fairly straightforward uh, programming um, another thing that's important uh, is the light brightness one thing that the uh, Tsunami decoders offer that the economies do not is this master brightness control. So you can use this to adjust the brightness level of all of the lighting outputs. Okay, And again, that one is using uh, CV64, as you can see here. So you just write a value of 100 into CV64, and that, active, you know, that controls how bright it is uh, initially. And I think this is a, a very good one to use because in a lot of cases with these new LEDs, they're super bright and, you know, you get this overpowering headlight. Okay, so that's those features. Um, the last thing that I talked about was our CVs 3 and 4, the acceleration and deceleration. And that's here under the motor controls. And as I said in that, I set these at an acceleration and deceleration of 10 in this particular case with these decoders and like the sounds uh, for the horn and the bell I then can go ahead put it on the ops mode uh, track after I've programmed the basic values of 10 in each one of these CVs and these are three and four uh, very straightforward and easy to program um, but at any rate if you don't like that acceleration and deceleration rate then you can easily change that using ops mode programming, programming on the main, using either your throttle or, as I said, using a Decoder Pro set up for ops mode programming instead of service mode programming. So that's pretty straightforward uh, uh, step. And then you can just, you know, write your changes on the sheet again. Um, that's pretty much it. I hope that um, there are not any questions. If they are, you know where the comment uh, section is here. Okay, that pretty much wraps up the uh, programming uh, steps for this particular locomotive that I wrote about in the uh, the April uh, 2020 Model Railroader magazine. Uh, so go ahead, take a look back at the article. And, you know, once again, Decoder Pro really is the way to go for programming decoders, particularly anything that's a, a com complex step. Everything is there together and it's organized. So, you know, if you haven't uh, tried out Decoder Pro yet, download it, install it, take a look at it, give it a test drive because it's free. And, you know, as I showed you in a previous video on using Decoder Pro without an interface, you can try it out without having to hook it up to your model railroad. So go ahead, enjoy, have a good week, stay safe and healthy. Bye-bye now.